Let's take a look at projectiles today. So what do we mean by a projectile? Well, it's just any time we launch an object into the air. So for instance, if we throw a baseball, the baseball, while it's in the air, would be called a projectile. However, it would not be called a projectile while it was in contact with your hand. So it's got to be free of your hand. It's got to be free of whatever's launching it to be called a projectile. So footballs, missiles, bullets, cannonballs, all good examples of projectiles. Okay, what I'd like you to think about is what are the vertical forces acting on a projectile and what are the horizontal forces acting on a projectile and I'd like you to neglect air resistance. That's not a particularly good assumption unless you've got a slow moving object that's quite dense and aerodynamic. However, we're going to make that assumption because we want to do the simplest physics first. And throwing in air resistance is fairly complicated because the air resistance always changes as the object speeds up or slows down. So we're going to neglect air resistance at least to begin with. So pause the video and think about the forces acting. So hopefully you said the vertical forces, there's only one vertical force that's acting downwards, that's equal to the weight or the gravitational force. So you multiply the mass times g. Now for the horizontal forces, remember a force can only be created by a field or contact. Now, if there's no air resistance, there's no contact with our projectile. That means that there's no horizontal forces. You've only got this one field force. So there's none. No horizontal forces. But remember, that doesn't mean it's going to stop horizontally because the law of inertia says you don't need a force for something to keep doing what it's doing. Now before we get into this, what I'd like you to do is to recall what happened when we just dropped objects from rest. So if we launch our object at time t equals zero seconds and we're just dropping it from rest, so it's starting with an initial speed of zero and it hasn't fallen any distance yet. Then we wait for one second, so this would be one second, so one second of time of fall. The speed, remember it's going to gain, well, 9.8 meters per second of speed every second or I'm going to round that to 10 meters per second of speed every second. So the speed would have to be 10 meters per second after one second. Now the distance that it goes, well, keep in mind it started at zero speed, ended up at 10 meters per second and it was gaining speed at a constant rate. So the average speed should be halfway between 10 and zero. It should be 5 meters per second. And if you go 5 meters per second for one second, you'll go a distance of 5 meters. So this distance here would be 5 meters. Now let's go to 2 seconds. So at 2 seconds, the speed should be 20 meters per second. It gained 10 meters per second of speed every second for 2 seconds. The distance traveled, well, halfway between 0 and 20 would be the average speed, which is 10 meters per second. And if it travels at 10 meters per second for 2 seconds, it should go 20 meters. So this distance here should be 20 meters. Let's go for the third second. The speed now should be 30 meters per second. Average speed halfway between 0 and 30 is 15 meters per second. If you go 15 meters per second for 3 seconds, you should go 45 meters. So this distance here is going to be 45 meters. And if we did it again, fourth second, we would get a speed of 40 meters per second and we get a distance here of 80 meters. You can check this out yourself. These distances are equal to 5t squared. So if I put in, say, t equals 2, I get 5 times 4, 20 meters, which checks out here. And you probably recall that we had this formula when we were dealing with constant acceleration problems, that the displacement would be equal to the initial velocity times time plus one half a t squared. Well, if we're dropping from rest, our initial speed is zero. Our acceleration is simply 10 here, so we're really getting that delta x equals one half a is 10 times t squared or five t squared. So the distance falling from rest is going to be given by 5t squared. What I'd like you to do is to keep these numbers in mind. 5 meters, 20 meters, 45 meters, 80 meters. That's how far the ball will drop after 1 second, 2 seconds, 3 seconds, and 4 seconds. 
Okay, so hopefully you remember those numbers for just dropping a ball straight down. 5, 20, 45, 80. So after one second, our ball should fall 5 meters. I'm going to let one centimeter here represent 5 meters. After two seconds, it's supposed to fall by 20 meters, which would be right here. And after three seconds, it should fall 45 meters, which is down here. Now, let's pretend there was no gravity, and we just threw the ball with a speed here of 10 meters per second, horizontally across. Then it's always going to go at the same speed. And if we look at one second intervals, it should move across by 10 meters in the first second. And then another 10 meters, and another 10 meters, and another 10 meters, etc. But it's always moving across by 10 meters every second. And I'll denote this line, but I'll call it the no gravity line. So that's the horizontal motion independent of the vertical motion. Now what we're going to do is turn gravity back on. And what gravity is going to do is bring it down by exactly these same distances in the same amount of time. So after one second, the ball wouldn't be here anymore. If we turn on gravity, gravity is going to bring it down by five meters, and it's going to be here. And then after two seconds, gravity is going to bring it down by 20 meters, and it's going to be right here. And then after three seconds, gravity is going to bring it down by 45 meters, and it's going to be right here. So you can see the shape of the flight of the ball is parabolic. And we speak of this effect where the vertical motion doesn't affect the horizontal motion, that they work independently of each other. We call that independence of motion. So that vertical force causes the ball to drop by 5 meters in the first second, 20 meters in the second second, 45 meters in the third second, etc. Okay, I have two IB questions for you to see if you understand the idea of independence of motion. Here's the first question. Pause the video, read it over, try it out for yourself, come back for the answer. Okay, so hopefully you said C, whether it drops straight down or is projected outwards. If it's launched horizontally, it's going to hit the ground at the same time. And that's because of the independence of horizontal and vertical motion. Here's the second question. Pause the video, read it over, try it out for yourself, come back for the answer. So we're going to launch two projectiles, one with a speed twice as large as the other. But they're both being launched horizontally. And so the key here is whether it's dropped vertically or launched horizontally, the time is the same. All particles launched horizontally will hit the ground at the same time. So this distance r is going to equal that horizontal speed times time. Our second r will be equal to twice the speed times the same amount of time, which is just going to be 2 times the original r. So the correct answer here is c. The question you might now be asking yourself is, well, what happens if we don't launch horizontally? What if we launch towards the ground? So Let's say the ball is thrown off the cliff at this particular angle towards the ground like that. So now this would be our no gravity line. But the thing is, gravity still acts on the ball in exactly the same way. So in one second, gravity will bring the ball down by five meters. And it brings it down five meters from the no gravity line. So the actual place of the ball would be five meters below where it would be if there was no gravity. And then after two seconds, we're supposed to go down 20 meters. And that would be the case here. We'd go down 20 meters, approximately there, and the ball would be located right here. After three seconds, of course, it would be 45 meters. And we'd be off the page. So the, the ball would take a path something like that. But the key to understanding this is that independence of motion. Gravity still brings it down by the same distances in the same amounts of time. 
Now, if you really understood that last explanation, then you're going to make an excellent prediction in the monkey hunter problem. Let me set up the monkey hunter problem. So in the problem, you've got a hunter, and he's got a gun, or let's say a bow and arrow, and he aims that bow directly at a monkey that's hanging in a tree. And then let's say at the instant that the hunter releases his bow, the monkey here lets go. So he begins to drop. And the question becomes, is that going to help the monkey? Is that arrow still going to hit him, or will he drop below the arrow and not get hit? So what I'd like you to do is pause the video and make a prediction for yourself, and then I'm going to let the people from the MIT Physics Department who have made some fantastic videos, I'm going to let them show you what actually happens with the demonstration. So what's going on there? Being as both objects were released at exactly the same time, they both fall the same distance from the no-gravity line. The monkey falls straight down, whereas the arrow takes a parabolic path, but it still falls the same distance from the no-gravity line as the monkey, because they're both in the air for the same amount of time. Now, very quickly, I wanted to come back to this diagram to give you a visual representation of the components of the velocity vector. We said that there weren't any horizontal forces, and that means there's no horizontal acceleration, which means the horizontal velocity remains constant. So if we throw this off the cliff going at 10 meters per second, it's still going to be going at 10 meters per second as it continues to fall. And I should draw all these vectors the same length. The vertical motion well, it starts out with zero velocity. One second later, it should be going at 10 meters per second. And the reason it should be going at 10 meters per second is because the acceleration is about well, 9.8, which is approximately 10 meters per second of speed gained every second. So after one second, it should be going 10. And then after two seconds, should gain another 10 meters per second of speed. So it would be going 20 meters per second after two seconds. And then it would be going 30 meters per second after three seconds. So if we add these vectors, construct a parallelogram, you'll find the resultant lies tangential to that parabola, which is to say the velocity is, of course, going to be tangential, which means, of course, that the instantaneous velocity remains tangential to the path of the motion. So the vertical component keeps changing by 10 every second, but the horizontal component doesn't change at all. Here's an IB question on the horizontal and vertical components, in this case of the speed rather than the velocity. The writing's a bit small, so let me read the question. A projectile is fired from the ground at time t equals zero. It lands back on the ground at time t equals capital T. Which of the following sketch graph best shows the variation with time t of the vertical speed, capital V subscript V, and the horizontal speed, capital V subscript H, of the projectile. Air resistance is assumed to be negligible. Pause the video, try the question, come back for the answer. First thing is, if there's no friction, there's no horizontal forces. And that means our vertical velocity, our vertical speed, has to remain constant. Here's where we've got, in answers A and B, we have a constant horizontal speed. So the answer's got to be A or B, can't be C or D. Now the vertical velocity, I'll call it Vy for velocity, it starts out quite large and positive, becomes zero at the top, and then becomes quite negative at the bottom. The speed, of course, is just the magnitude of that, so we don't have to worry about the direction it's going. So it starts out with a high speed, in the middle it's got zero speed, and at the end it's got a high speed again. So this is still moving fast at the end. So the correct answer here should be answer B. High speed, zero speed, high speed again. Now I have two examples of horizontally launched projectiles. Mathematically, these horizontally launched projectiles are very simple. So what I'd like you to do with these two questions is not rely on a bunch of equations. I'd like you to rely on your physical reasoning and see if you can do the problem. 
So pause the video, read the question over, try it out for yourself, and then come back for the answer. So hopefully you remember these numbers for objects that drop straight down, that if t equals one second, the distance dropped would be five meters. And after two seconds, distance dropped would be 20 meters. And after three seconds, it would be 45 meters. These numbers simply following d equals five t squared. So it's going to take exactly one second to get to the ground because that horizontal motion doesn't affect the vertical motion. And we know that an object that drops straight down five meters takes one second. So if we've got a five meter cliff, whether it goes straight down or is launched horizontally, the time is going to be one second. Second thing we know is that there's no horizontal forces acting and that means there's no horizontal acceleration and that means our horizontal speed will be constant the whole time it will be going at 28 meters per second. So how far out will it land? That distance x, x has to equal to the speed times the time and it's moving horizontally at 28 meters per second and it's going to do that for one second. And so that means it's going to fall 28 meters from the edge of the cliff. And then in part B, if we had dropped it from 20 meters, then of course the time would be equal to two seconds. And the distance it would fall from the edge of the cliff, well, it would be going at 28 meters per second, a constant horizontal velocity for a total time of two seconds. So it would fall 56 meters from the cliff. Here's another problem that I think can be done with just physical reasoning rather than using a lot of equations. What I'd like you to do is to pause the video, try the question, come back for the answer. So we're launching a projectile up such that its vertical component of velocity is 20 and its horizontal component is only 10. It's going to go up, come back down. First thing we know is the amount of time it spends in the air will be exactly the same as if we had just launched it straight up at 20 meters per second. And we know that it's going to lose 10 meters per second of speed every second, really 9.8, but we can round that to 10. So the acceleration of gravity is such that you're going to lose 10 meters per second of speed every second. So one second later, it would be going upwards at only 10 meters per second. And then another second later, it would be going zero meters per second. And then it would, and then the next second, it would be coming back down at 10 meters per second, and then would hit the ground moving at 20 meters per second. So how much time in the air? Well, one second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds. So the time in the air is four seconds. Second thing, what will be the maximum height and at what time will this occur? Well, the time, that's easy it's going to occur at two seconds, halfway through the motion. What will that maximum height be? Well, let's look at the back half of the projectile here. We know that it takes two seconds to fall, and an object that falls for two seconds must fall 20 meters. So the maximum height has to be 20 meters. So that's simply because if you let an object drop 20 meters, it always takes two seconds. Then finally, part C, how far will the projectile go? Well, it's moving horizontally at 10 meters per second, and it stays in the air for four seconds. So it should go across by a grand total of 40 meters. Okay, so let's summarize our results for projectile motion. So we started off by noticing that that vertical motion, it's independent of the horizontal motion. And the horizontal motion, well, there's no horizontal forces acting, so the horizontal velocity remains constant. There's no horizontal acceleration. And we saw that horizontally launched projectiles always take exactly the same time to fall as objects that are dropped straight down. And this might not be a big idea that's worth summarizing, but I think it's worth keeping these numbers in your head. Objects that are dropped straight down from rest fall 5 meters in 1 second, 20 meters in 2 seconds, and 45 meters in 3 seconds. The equation for that is d equals 5t squared.
And then finally, in the more complicated situation where we have a projectile launched at an angle, gravity always brings the projectiles down by the same amount of time from the no gravity line. And that's what we saw in the monkey hunter problem. And I think those were the key ideas from the video. And that's all for today, folks. Thank you very much.